Hey, welcome back. If you're a Sony fan and own a PS5, then yesterday we got some pretty exciting news. Sony finally downloaded a patch to the OS that allowed the internal drive bay to operate. So, if you've been using one of these as your internal drive, or your external drive, and it's slow and you're tired of it, today, we're gonna put one of these in and we're gonna speed up the performance. I'm Tony Ferraro, this is PGH Game Fix, and we'll show you how to get it done. All right, today's a little on the exciting side. As you can see on the bench today, we have our PS5. This is my personal one, my day one, that we uh, did the opening video of, and I'll link it up here in the corner. And it's been a, a good system for me. Uh, it plays all of my PS4 games. It uh, plays the VR system fairly well. There's a few games that aren't compatible, um, but most of what I've run into that won't run are more or less just the demos. But like a lot of people who've managed to get their hands on a PS5, the internal storage was kind of lacking. Uh, they called it a little over 800 gigabytes, but with the OS installed and everything running, I think it realistically only shows a little over half a terabyte, somewhere in the 600 gig range. So, like a lot of you people out there, I plugged in an external USB hard drive and, you know, it works. You can put your PS4 games on it, stuff that you don't care if it loads fast or not, but you can really feel the difference between the internal solid state drive and an external physical uh, disk drive. Now, with that said, the external drives are very inexpensive compared to our modern, you know, MVE type drives. Um, so, <laughs> where does that bring us? Yesterday, Sony released the newest OS update, and it finally turned the internal bay on, which a lot of people were excited about. I'm one of them. Um, of course, I could have been part of the beta program, but honestly, this kind of stuff, I don't want to be the guinea pig. I'll let other people test it. So, I have never installed a drive like this into the PlayStation 5, and a lot of people haven't because <laughs> This is pretty much uh, 24 hours since the uh, update's been released. And uh, we're gonna do it together. And I'll show you how simple it should be. Now, I guess before we get to that, there are some requirements. And we will go through the actual screen on the Sony website, but uh, more or less, the drive you decide to buy needs to be a generation four, four thread, drive. Also, it needs to sustain more than 5.5 gigabytes per second transfers. Um, this is a Western Digital Black. It's the, uh, which one was it? This is the SN850. Um, this was one that some of the developers used from Sony, so we know they're good. Also, there are a few videos out there with people doing benchmarks and speed tests, and honestly, you know, on one benchmark, one drive will run slightly faster. On the next one, a different drive will run slightly faster. So more or less, if you're getting a name brand Gen 4 drive, you should be good. Um, with that said, I will link a few down below that we know are good. So let's just go ahead and get into it. As you can see, we're at the front of the, front of the PlayStation and we're gonna flip her over. and all our tools are in the way. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift this back corner and just kinda push it off this direction. And it, it really comes off that simple. Um, this one has never been opened before, so sometimes it can be a little stiff, but um, it's pretty much that simple. Now we have a number one Phillips in the same type of screw that they've been using since the uh, PlayStation 3 with the, you know, the Sony characters on it. We'll just set that aside for now. 
lift up our lid and we're into our bay. Now this is an 80 millimeter long drive. So we're gonna put this, these, these slots here, as you can see, you got a 30, a 42, 60, 80, and a 110. This is for the different length drives. And it has to do with this cutout length. So we're gonna just take the screw out. We're gonna move it to an 80. You'll need to know what size your drive is, but it seems like a lot of these are gonna be the, the 2280 type. So we just need to move this ring to our 80 millimeter length. Take our drive. It's gonna come in at a slight angle. If I can find the slot, there we go. Make sure it's the whole way in. And press it down. It's really just that simple. There's not much to it. Now, I will say this, the Xbox, they made it, the, the I guess the, the new Xbox, the Series S and the Series X, they made it extremely simple. Um, it's kind of like just an SD card, you snap it in the back. Now the downside to that is, and I know a lot of people, there's always feuds between Xbox and PlayStation. This one, as of this recording, I ran out to Best Buy and just grabbed this. And mind you, it's the same price on um, Amazon. Like I said, I'll make them some links below. And these go for $179 right now. These are, like I said, Gen 4, 4 thread. This one claims to be uh, 7,000 um, megabyte per second. The one that they sell you for the Xbox is really only a Gen 3, 2 thread. So it's the last generation. And they're going for $230 right now. So quite literally for $50 less, you're getting faster memory. And the nice thing is this is a, a, an industry standard, the, the PCIe type, you know, M.2 type drives. There's competition. They're only going to get faster and they're going to get bigger and they're going to get cheaper. A year from now, we're going to be looking at, you know, eight terabyte ones for a hundred dollars. Most, most likely. So anyway, Oh, one other word. These do get warm. They do get hot. Unfortunately, the local store did not have a heat sink for me today. So one will be ordered and installed. I highly recommend using a heat sink. And on that note, you have two millimeters underneath available and a little over eight millimeters above to still fit inside this door. So be careful when you're buying your heat sink and uh, you should be fine. Just don't get a big tall one. So now we just put our door back on and we can see where we're at with all this. When this goes back on, just kind of line up this edge. You're going to lift up this corner again. And that's it. Just snaps back down on flat. So there's our PS5, ready to go. So give me a minute. I'm gonna hook up the cable, switch over to the video, and we'll see what our next step is. All right, let's go ahead and look at the specs on the update because Sony lays it all out for us. So over here, as you can see, here's our update page for the console, and here's our newest version. And of course, this all talks about the new M.2 drive. So, you know, it says you can do it, um, and here's your requirements, PCIe Gen 4, minimum of 250 gigabytes, maximum 4 terabytes. And like I was saying before, um, on Linus Tech, they tried to do an 8 and it did not work. And it pretty much outlines what we just did. Um, this new update also gives us 3D audio and... Um, it changes a few things in the game library where we can move our icons around. And I know it also updated the controllers. Here we go. Here's the update on the DualSense controllers. Uh, they don't give any other, other uh, info other than improved stability. But, you know, the bulk of it up here is 
about what we need. I really figured they would have given us more speed factors and whatnot, but I think generally speaking, M.2 Gen 4 is a minimum of 5,500 um, megabytes per second, which is their requirements. All right, we've got an HDMI cable, we got some power, we got our video switched over. Let's boot her up. To my understanding, the first thing it's going to do is ask us to format the drive, which it's doing. So it found our drive, M.2 solid state drive, and you can turn it off and remove it, but you know, we want to, we want to format it. Now I will say this over on, uh, I believe it's Linus tech. He put a fast gen three in or a big gen three, and it just said it wasn't going to work. But then he put a slow Gen 4 in, and it allowed him to install it, but it warned him because the speeds were very low. So keep that in mind. Pretty much don't try the Gen 3. And if you got a slow Gen 4 laying around, I guess it can't hurt to try it out. But I wouldn't buy a new one solely based on trying to use it on this. Since this is a digital drive, it should be quick. And it is. So this one claims, the Western Digital claims up to 7,000 megabytes per second. So seven gigabit bytes per second. And we got eh, 65, almost 66. So we're doing good. That's still faster than the internal. we go into our settings, go look at our storage, we'll see what we're in there. So now we can see that we've got our M.2 storage and we could probably move some stuff around. Let's see, USB obviously is not there right now. <laughs> got goat simulator um you know what just for giggles let's go ahead and move goat simulator over um Well, that just moved three gigs of data in a matter of seconds. So as you can see internally from the internal or the original solid state drive to our new um, secondary solid state drive, things are moving quick. And you know, I don't want this video to take forever, but let's just go ahead and look. We'll get back out of this and um, As you can see, I've got a lot of VR games, Dick Wild and Arizona Sunshine. Let's just see how fast Goat Simulator fires off now. Gotta love that picture. <laughs> Well, and there it is. So you can see everything moves really quick internally. Um, I don't think that loaded any faster or slower than uh, from one drive to the next. There are other videos out there on showing boot times and comparing one type of drive to another. And like I said, most of it is marginal. Um, I know on one of the videos I watched last night, somebody showed, and this is also, mind you, on the beta software, uh, somebody showed a drive 
winning where when they had four pictures it it came on at a, a fraction of a second quicker so but there you have it that's all it takes to install an m.2 drive in your ps5 the update should already be in your system best buy has these guys on the shelf currently if you want to just go grab one today and uh, they are the same exact price as amazon but if you're not in a rush, I will make the Amazon links below and the affiliate links do help support the channel. And I appreciate anybody who uses those links. So if you have any questions, any comments, go ahead and make them down below. I try to answer every real question that I see. Give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button because it really does help out the channel. And I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks.